And finally, the last game in this super intense benchmarking session is finally upon us, Halo Infinite of course, and today I'm going to be showing you exactly how it's performing with some budget graphics cards. As you've probably seen already, Halo Infinite dropped way earlier than we originally expected with this multiplayer only mode on Steam, and if you haven't tried it out yet, it's actually completely free to play so you might as well jump right in. Speaking of jumping right in, that's exactly what we're going to do in today's video. We'll talk about our testing methods and our testing rig after jumping right into the numbers, let's just start benchmarking. After the pre-roll ad, of course, because I gotta feed my family. Today's video is sponsored by, honestly, one of my personal favorite products that launched in the last couple of months. That's, of course, this Corsair H150i Elite LCD AIO. Not only are you getting this standard IQ customization with the fans, high quality construction and reliability, and multiple radiator sizes to choose from like normal, but Corsair has also finally bundled in this amazing LCD screen, and this is one of those parts that will take your build to a whole new aesthetic level. Believe it or not, this is actually a 30 fps ips display with 24 bit colors and it just looks so nice and clean and you can make it show whatever you want you can display critical system information like your cpu temperature or load percentage you can customize the background of it with different scenes and you can even display literally whatever photo or gif you want on there the possibilities are endless take your gaming pc to the next level with the corsair h150i elite lcd link is in the description all right so just like my other benchmarking videos i want to start off benchmarking each individual gpu with the specific settings that we would recommend using if this was your graphics card and afterwards we'll show a huge chart with the results of every GPU benchmark with the exact same settings that way you can see how they all compare against each other. Starting on the Nvidia side we fired up the GTX 750 Ti to see if it could redeem itself from the insta crashing during our Battlefield 2042 benchmarking video and I actually couldn't believe it but it crashed yet again with this title as well. You are not watching 750 Ti footage right now just so you know but I just can't believe that we are finally seeing the official death of one of the most dominant price to performance budget graphics cards of the last decade, can we get an official rip down in the comment section for this legendary GPU? Next up, we tested the GTX 960, which honestly has a legitimate chance of replacing the 750 Ti's role, and in 1080p with low settings, we actually got above that 60 FPS mark with 64, and that's a fantastic start to represent these budget GPUs. The GTX 970 followed up after that, and also in 1080p with low settings, we got just a tiny bump up to 68 FPS, which is definitely interesting. The GTX 970 usually performs way better than the 960, but remember that we are testing different multiplayer maps as we can't guarantee which map will get chosen to play when benchmarking, so there's a slight variation going from GPU to GPU. The GTX 1050 was up after that, this is just a 2 gigabyte card just for the record, and in 1080p with low settings we get again 68 FPS, which was very similar to the results of the 960 and the 970. Following suit was the 3 gigabyte GTX 1060, and again, in 1080p with low settings we got slightly above the last 3 cards, but still very close with 71 FPS. I do think it's a bit odd that there's not much more separation between these four GPUs. Definitely something worth checking out in the future if we have more time. Blowing past those cards though, we have some beefier budget Nvidia cards, and the first one up was the GTX 1650 Super, and we decided to keep the settings at 1080p and low again. Remember, even if you're on a 60 hertz budget monitor, getting close to 100 FPS isn't a waste at all because your 1% lows will still be around 60, and that's exactly what we got here with 91 FPS with a 1% low of 59. And finally for the last Nvidia card, we have the GTX 1070, and in 1080p with low settings, we got just a bit higher than the 1650 Super results with 101 FPS. Switching over to the budget AMD side of things, first up we have our AliExpress RX 460 2GB card, and here we couldn't quite run at normal 1080p low, so we dropped the resolution scale down to 70% and still only got 43 FPS. This is still certainly playable, but a card like the RX 460 is definitely going to struggle with this title. The RX 570 followed up after that, and in 1080p with low settings and 100% resolution scale, we got just under our 60 FPS target mark with 57, and this does show that we have a slight Nvidia advantage here as the card should have performed at least better than the GTX 960 and maybe some of the other budget Nvidia cards as well. And finally for the last GPU of the run we have our RX 580 that can once again only stay working for like 10 minutes at a time but that's enough to get a proper benchmarking read and in 1080p with low settings we got 70 FPS. That does conclude our individual benchmarks but just like always I want to compare all of them side by side with the exact same settings that way we can see how they all compare against each other. For this chart we did use 1080p and low settings for all 
the GPUs, but that was the setting that we honestly use for most of these graphics cards already. But nonetheless, here are the results. Like I said, I do think this game is performing slightly better on Nvidia compared to AMD, but I'm definitely really happy to see cards like the GTX 960 and GTX 1050 getting above that 60 FPS mark. And you can easily find these GPUs on the market today for like less than 150 bucks. Now, before letting you guys go, I do want to quickly talk about the testing rig real quickly. I already fully reviewed this thing in the previous Battlefield 2042 benchmarking video, so no need to go super in depth here. This is what the full parts list is looking like, and you mainly just need to know that we use the Intel i5 11600KF as our CPU with 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM, so there was absolutely no bottleneck between these GPUs, and we were able to see what they were fully capable of with this testing platform. And as far as our testing method goes, we couldn't choose which map to test, so there were certainly some inconsistencies here. Our benchmarking god Sam did say that one of the maps produced way higher FPS than the rest of them, but there's still definitely a difference in performing from every map to every map. This shouldn't affect the higher end of our budget cards like the GTX 1650 Super or GTX 1070, but if you are gaming on something super cheap like the RX 460, playing on one of the harder to run maps may just be the difference between playable and unplayable, so definitely keep that in mind. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that this was our fourth benchmarking video in just the last month alone for all of these new game releases. November was an obnoxious month for benchmarking, but it's also about to be an obnoxious month for getting the good deals because Black Friday is almost here. Two quick things to announce here. The first one is that the ZaxTechDrift.com website will be having a killer Black Friday deal. And honestly, I can't imagine that we aren't going to sell out. There's still a few builds up there now that are in stock, but those are gonna be put on a killer sale. And we are also launching a few more PCs on there that will also be on some serious discounts as well. If you've been looking to buy a completed gaming PC that looks baller AF, then Black Friday on ZaxTechDrift.com is definitely the place to be, especially for you parents out there that are just trying to buy a PC for your kids for Christmas. The other announcement is that over in our ZTT Discord server, not only are we going to be posting our normal ZTT deals on Black Friday and Cyber Monday, just like we do every other day of the week, but our deals gods, Shauna and Dr. Zoomer, will be curating our own PC hardware deal master list, and every year it's easily the best resource for getting the good deals. You aren't going to see fluff like you do on every other Black Friday deals list, like smart plugs and Amazon Echoes and all that. No, these are just going to be the absolute best of the best deals for both PC gamers and especially for PC flippers. Make sure you join us over in the ZTT Discord server if you haven't already. And finally, one more last request before we get out of here. Comment down below with the check mark emoji indicating that not only are we done this obnoxious month of benchmarking, but it'll also let me know who watched till the very end of the video so I can know exactly who the ballers are around here. And also feel free to click the playlist that's on the screen now if you want to see the other games that we benchmarked this month. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.